Notice the ridge and furrow to the to the bottom right. Ridge and furrow is a medieval or pre-medieval method of ploughing. It hasn't been done for a few hundred years in this country. The dark strips are the are the furrow. It shows that the people of uh, Kintbury, which is where we are now, were desperate enough for cereal crops that they used a bit of meadow uh, to plough up for that purpose, which is not its purpose. Today it's still um, meadow. A meadow comes from Old English uh, medway um, and and mead is mad, merde, and it means the, the, the mowing land. And you don't just mow it for the fun of it. You mow it to take away the hay to store in your barn and to feed your animals over winter. It is a crucial part of a, of a medieval landscape to have mead land, which is why every village... Even if you didn't have mead land near it, you need a river. Not every village has a river. But a, a village would have been allocated a bit of meadow from somebody else's river, even if it was a couple of miles away. It is a crucial part of... So crucial um, to medieval life that it, was, that it was, in the early part of the Anglo-Saxon period, held in common. It was so crucial to everybody that everybody had to take um, mutual responsibility for it. I did plan on coming here to talk about land use um, and the historical context, but um, that plan soon faded once I actually got here to experience uh, the area myself. Uh, no, no plan outlasts contact with the enemy. The experience I had is, is what follows. This is a sluice gate and it, what it does is it passes, there will be a door, slidey down door there, which will hold off the water from a different channel. At the moment it's going, well it's going through both at the moment, but normally it would go down here all the time. And then when the landowner wants to flood that meadow over there, he lifts up that board of that board and through the water rushes in through a network of channels and floods the, floods the uh, water meadow. Well, that was interesting. I was planning this route and there's a short little stretch of road and I thought, that's a bit inconvenient, that's private. And I get up here. If you look at the map, I'll show you a picture of the map here. And uh, you'll see the... Uh, it's all... Um, it's quite poor access to the marshes around here. And uh, it's always convenient to have some sort of circular bits uh, to, get a, to get across, to go around, to go for a nice walk. And there's a tiny little shortcut that is private, private land. And I did, did check up on the uh, West Berkshire website whether or not, you know, sometimes people call their road private when it's the council that tarmacs it and repairs it and does all the rest of it. And therefore, it is a public now, it is at that point a public highway. 
but no, it's still it's still private. And it seems West Berkshire Council has uh, put uh, put in an order to make it public. But I presume somebody from uh, one of the locals is. Uh, has um, suggested it and it does make a lot of sense but I was chatting to the um, to the farm uh, manager he came along to have a, have a look at me convenience isn't really a matter of rights you do get these um, disputes between local local people um, and landowners around access to uh, to the countryside and normally I say there is plenty of footpaths you know you, you know part of the thing of being grown up is respecting other people's boundaries but it's, uh, it does seem to me that um, there aren't enough and a little bit more public footpaths uh, may be in order it's very very tempting because I, I mean I said to um, I said to Patrick that he was uh, you know, well managed. There's really, um, really pleasant vistas going into the, into the marshlands. We've mowed it really nicely, you know, and let the wildflowers come up. I did ask whether I could have permission to have a wander around, but it was, uh, it was denied. You know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, which is a shame, really. It's the, it's the sort of thing that uh, creates goodwill um, with the public. Um, now, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, there's a really good case for keeping the public out because with the poverty in the 19th century, early 20th century, half the locals would be in that, in that marshland fishing for, um, you know, taking out the landowner's trout. And uh, that was worth money and it was, uh, taking bread off the, um, the landowner's table but it is uh, nowadays landowners tend to be investment bankers you can hardly say the risk of letting people in would lead to the sort of poaching by the way I've got my poaching bag today this is officially this is officially called a poaching bag <laughs> it's really posh and uh, it's second hand, it was really posh originally. And uh, you can hardly say that uh, the risk of poaching would be a major loss to the income of the landowner, therefore, keep, keep everybody out. But then it's not my property, it's a, it's a tricky one. I just, uh, I just missed a, a kingfisher, would you believe it? And uh, it just like a flicker of blue and gold and it was off. And uh, I did hang around a little bit, see if I could uh, catch him. Oh, that would have been a nice, a nice um, bit to the video. But anyway, I just talking to somebody and I said it's a, some sort of argument going on between the village and the, and the, and the manor house. And it turns out, and I don't know, I'm going to have to check when I get back, it turns out it's a minor royal living in the house. That could explain me walking around with a massive camera with a zoom lens, um, why the, 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 the manager was going, you know, very politely, but firmly, wondering what the hell I'm doing. And um, yeah, so uh, what are we doing today, that sort of thing. And um, yeah. Uh, and we talked a bit and I was trying to um, catch a bit of access to the land with a bit of permission which she wasn't forthcoming but it does explain why he did stop he did come and have a look um, 